With every expansion in Final Fantasy XIV comes the release of a quest chain that is intended to bring players together, to funnel Warriors of Light from all walks of life through a series of hurdles in the hopes of forging friendships from their shared Stockholm Syndromes. And you get something glowy to flex at the end too. I am speaking, of course, about buying the glow stick emote from the Mog Station and standing around Limsa with them. But I suppose you can also do a relic weapon if that isn't your cup of tea. With the recent controversy on Endwalker's relic quests and how they've been released as nothing more than glorified tombstone vendors, I decided to take a look back and attempt to complete the only type of relic in Final Fantasy XIV's 10 year history that I've never done before. The Zodiac Relics, originally released alongside A Realm Reborn. Whenever I hear about these relics, it's always about how much of a grind they are and how long they take to do. I read tales of people talking about taking weeks to make it through to completion on a single relic, even now that we have the advantage of 40 levels over any of the content, making it super simple to solo. From my own limited experience, a couple of years ago, I started one of these relics and I gave up shortly after about a third of the way through. I just didn't have the mental fortitude and commitment to keep at it, so I sidelined it and never came back to it. This time was going to be different. To raise the stakes, I decided that going for the relic wasn't enough. Instead, I was going to go for the relic weapon in one single day. 24 hours. If I happen to go one minute over that 24 hour limit, I would immediately discard the weapon, eradicating all of my progress in a second. Now, there were stakes. Additionally, I let my chat vote on which relic I would go for, meaning I could end up playing one of my least favourite jobs in the game. Or maybe they'd give me something comfy and fun, like Summoner or Dragoon or... Ugh. We are going to start our Zeta today. This is mainly so that we can see the overall time. I'm not actually really doing a speedrun, right? We just have to do it within 24 hours. But I thought I'd set up that the little splitter thingy that the speedrunners use because I thought it would be interesting. And I'll start the timer when we pick up the quest. The first step starts out simple sending you to talk to a bunch of NPCs, then immediately to a location in the overworld specific to your job's relic weapon to go collect a broken weapon that will form the base of your future relic. Then you have to craft this weapon, <coughs> buy it on the market board and meld it. I guess Eorzea's finest blacksmith is definitely not Eorzea's finest melder because this guy has me putting plus zeros into the weapon for some unknown reason. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. Then you have to queue and face your mightiest challenge yet, the Chimera. <clears throat> Speed through a dungeon unsynced, turn in some cheap tombstone materials, and hunt a bunch of Lenossian beastmen. Sorry, they're allied tribesmen now, aren't they? And then finally, I can face my next major hurdle. The Hydra. <coughs> then after all that, you've just got to doink Ifrit, then consider doinking Garuda and Titan unsynced as well, which in 2023 takes about 30 seconds combined, if you aren't an idiot like me, before grinding out the daunting requirement of 15 poetics in order to grab a Radzahan quenching oil to appease our taskmaster Geralt. This gave me the base relic weapon, the first of eight steps required to complete the Zodiac. To further lull me into a false sense of security, the second step took about as much work as this patch's PvP balance changes. All I needed to do was grab three Thabneran Mists for 60 Poetics, and then I was the oh-so-very-proud owner of an item level 90 Zenith weapon. Wow! We'd managed it in just over 20 minutes, and I was feeling good, but I knew that it was utterly deluded to think that this meant that I was actually a quarter of the way through the content. These steps were the easiest and the fastest in the entire questline, and what to come 
was going to make me worried as to whether I'd even managed to hit the 24-hour deadline. The next step is the Atma stage of the relic. You've probably heard of Atma before in hushed voices, those who speak of it dreading its next coming with their very beings. You have to collect 12 of these Atma crystals by completing fates in 12 different Aromaborn zones. You need to equip your work-in-progress glow stick to have a chance at drops. Notice I said a chance at drops because current estimates give you somewhere in the region of a 20% chance to actually get an Atma from a Fate. And this is only after a bunch of heavy nerfs to increase the drop chances. I've heard people as recently as this expansion complaining about taking days of grinding just to collect all 12. So coming into this step, I prepared a secret weapon. Anyone want to farm some Fates? Any, any homies want to do an Atma? <laughs> Begging chat for help. See, this was an ingenious idea. Until they start getting about three drops in the time it took me to get a single one. Soon enough, the hour mark came and went, but the grind on the whole was going smoothly thanks to a little blue mage assistance. An hour and 30 minutes in, and I was collecting my 12th and final Atma and trekking back to North Shroud to yeet them at Jal's arm. And people made out that this step was bad. It's just boring. Now, item level 100 Atma weapon in hand, I was ready to face possibly the greatest challenge I would in these entire 24 hours. Animus books. You can tell what kind of stage it's going to be based on the fact that you need to pay a hundred poetics for the privilege of opening one of the nine required books and viewing the 19 individual monotonous tasks that each one has waiting for you within. Every book has 10 sets of overworld mobs to find and defeat, usually for a total of 27 to 30 enemies, three dungeons to run, three fates to complete, some of which can take almost an hour real time to spawn, and three leave quests to complete. So overall, we are looking at you expending 900 poetics, 90 sets of overworld mobs for a total of somewhere around 270 kills, 27 dungeon runs, 27 fates, and 27 leave quests in order to progress through this one single step. There are two parts here that are absolutely awful. First of all, a number of the 27 required fates have a relatively long respawn timer, making them fairly rare. And because I'm me and I have my luck, there is a solid chance that I will be sat there waiting for them to respawn for an entire hour, twiddling my thumbs. Luckily, thanks to the cross-world border walls being knocked down in 14, if a fate I wanted wasn't spawned on my server, I could simply hop over to another server, and another, and another. The entire data center was my oyster, and I was absolutely going to use it to my advantage. Lastly, though, were the dreaded leaves. Leaves are not just boring. They may sound boring yet simple, but here is what actually sucks about them. Each NPC only has four leaves accessible for you to pick up at any one time, and which ones are available is completely RNG. How do you refresh the pool of leaves available, you might ask? Well, the only way is to complete one and turn it in. Grand Company leaves are even worse, with only two leaves being available at a time for each GC. So. If you end up unlucky, what often ends up happening is you may need to finish one, two, or even three leave quests that you didn't even need to do in order to get the leave you actually need from the potential pool. We ended up coming up with a solution for that as well though. A complete list of leaves required for all nine books is readily available on the internet. So when you go to an area, say for example Mordona, there's nothing preventing you from grabbing all of the leaves for every book that you need from that area in advance. Instead of just grabbing the leave you need for the book you are working on right now, 
you can instead attempt to grab the 4 to 5 leaves required in that zone for all books. You can hold up to 16 leaves at a time. So once I'd gotten the ball rolling with this, on numerous occasions, I instantly completed the leave requirement for a book because I had all three leaves ready to turn in from preparing them while working on a previous book. And it let me be way more efficient in how much I was teleporting around the overworld. Despite these ingenious lazy man solutions, this was still absolutely miserable. My first book finished up just before the three hour mark, and in the 90 minutes I spent on it, I was only able to muster up marginal prep work to lessen the pain for the next day. The hours rolled by, the chatters came and left, and my patience dwindled. This was the stage that had defeated my previous attempt all those years ago, and I was determined to see it through, despite how mind-numbing I was finding it. Each book was taking a solid 60 to 90 minutes to complete, with every server hop for a fate, with every unlucky leave quest, I could feel my time slipping away. Eventually, after the timer hit 9 hours and 9 minutes, I emerged victorious. Nine well-read books and just as many brain cells lost later, I had finally, after almost 10 years playing Final Fantasy XIV, made it past the Animus Step for the very first time. That's it. That's it. We go turn it in. Hell yeah! <laughs> Seeing that quest complete text gave me my second win, and I was excited to get stuck into the next step. After completing a couple of fetch quests and spending 75 more of my now dwindling poetic stock, I was given a sphere scroll. The way this scroll works is that you need to obtain materia 1 through materia 4 of different types and affix them to the scroll using an item called Alexandrite. Alexandrite is the real issue here as in order to obtain it, you need to complete a metric shit ton of duties, have access to an equally despicable number of tombstones, or you need to get lucky enough to completely decimate the Eorzean ecosystem of old A and S ranks. I got lucky though, because when I was preparing for this challenge, I checked through my retainers to see what I already had, and I found that for some unknown reason, I had like 125 Alexandrite just sitting there. I don't remember buying it, I can't imagine why I bought it, and to be honest, at the time when I did buy it, I probably had no idea what for. I probably just bought it randomly as a mistake. I can't imagine why I did, but my gosh, I was so thankful to pass me for being an idiot. Then, I went to my trusty friend the market board, and purchased every materia I needed, no matter the cost, because laziness trumps all, speeding to completion for this step in just under 20 minutes. At this point, I was just over halfway through the relic in nine and a half hours, with arguably the worst behind me. I was talking a big game. Only a few hours left, I thought. This relic is easy, I thought. In came light farming to punch me in the face and teach me my place as a filthy heavensward baby. To obtain the next step, the Zodiac Nexus, you need to achieve a grand total of 2,000 light to fully attune the weapon. How do you get light, you might ask? Well, anything is the easy answer, at least from a Rambo Born content. You can get it from trials, from dungeons, from hunts, and even from old PvP. I would love to tell you that this step is fun and relaxing because you can get fast progress doing whatever you like, making that 2k goal fly by, but here's what you actually do. That's right, the most efficient way to zoom through this step is to complete the Aurum Veil. A lot. 
Unless you get lucky enough to be on this step within a limited bonus window, you need to complete or unveil a grand total of 42 times. So, I completed or unveil 42 times. I dodged the big frogs with the annoying pullbacks, and then you one-shot the first boss, and then you pray Shikuchi is back, and then you try your best not to miss target a seedling instead of a mobile, then you pray for Shikuchi some more, and then my brain cells poured out of my ear, and then I killed the second boss, and then... It's been 84 years. It was then, at this point, that I realised that my chat had actually kind of blessed me by forcing me onto Ninja, with its two stacks of Shikuchi to zoom through trash rooms with the ability to gain another one instantly. With every use of Riton, it made what could have been two plus minute runs of Aurum Vale Aeolian edged all the way down to sub 130 with a little bit of practice. So thanks chat, you thought you got me, but actually, Ninja's meta. An hour and 20 minutes later, as my timer encroached on the 11 hour mark, I clocked out of my 40 second run and picked up my Nexus. I thought 42 runs of Aurum Veil was bad, but the next stage I was about to begin was horrible, with a capital H. On paper it seems super simple, after a little back and forth, you get the option to pick up 4 repeatable quests in Mordona. I never even knew this step existed until I started this relic quest, but it's the only point in the entire quest chain, and maybe in any relic that I can even think of, that you are required to spend a decent chunk of gil. You first need to buy 4 items for 100,000 gil a pop, that's the only way to get them, as well as 4 spring water for a total of 800 poetics, and 4 bombard cores for 80,000 Grand Company seals. Luckily, I had the seals just kind of sitting around, and turning my tombstone wallet upside down and shaking it a little bit dropped out the poetics I needed. But then I needed to grab 8 crafted items, one for each crafted job. I could spend a gross amount of time painstakingly gathering the prerequisite materials and making each one lovingly. But instead, I poofed to the nearest market board and dropped 700k to never have to think about it again. I kind of think it's worth it. You'd think we'd be free now. But after both of these demoralizing gill sinks, I then had to complete no less than 16 different Aroma Born dungeons to get the missing items to finish each of the four quests. There were some real bangers as well. A salacious starter of Sustasha Hard, followed by a delectable stone vigil hard mode main course and if you weren't already full enough for dessert there was of course a 43rd run of Aurum Vale on the menu too. I ended up just turning my brain off here and getting to work. For a step that I'd never even heard about, the almost two hours it took to complete took me by surprise. But it was okay because I was so far ahead at this point. Remember at the start of the video, this entire gamble was to complete a Zodiac Relic in under 24 hours. Well at this point, 12 and a half hours into my stream, I was clicking Accept Quest on what was to be the final step. The step that would give me a completed Zodiac Zeta Relic. Surely there's no way things can go wrong now, right? For this final step, Light Farming came back with a vengeance. You get 12 Mahatmas, each of which you can attach to your weapon for 50 Poetics, which then gives you the heavenly blessed privilege of farming two runs of Aurum Vale yet again, to fulfil the light requirement of that Mahatma to awaken it and complete it. Then you do it again and again and again, until all 12 have been attached and awoken. There are two simple steps that I had to fulfill in order to win. Step 1. Beg my chat to log onto alt characters so that I could farm their sweet sprout bodies for poetics bonuses, allowing me to afford the Mahatma in the first place. And step 2. Turn my brain off and enjoy another day with my good buddy Aurum Vale. So I got down to it. Mahatmas 1 through 8 went smoothly. But just as I was about to get stuck into my ninth one, this happened. Started streaming again properly on his main. 
Wait, what? Are you kidding me? What? Maximum number of duties exceeded. What? Are you kidding me? Are you telling me that I'm the drunk at the bar and Square Enix just told me to go home? Is anyone online? Can we see if you can cue us in? I I will try traveling to light afterwards if it... <laughs> Penalized and unable to undertake duty at this time. Bro, I'm gonna try going to light and see if it fixes it. <laughs> okay, let's see if all we've got to do is skip town. Let's see. Can we just skip town? Why is. Oh, yeah, my chat box is here. Unrestricted party. Or unveil. No! <laughs> oh my god. It's all over. <laughs> we tried. We tried, lads. We tried. <laughs> we gave it our best shot. It was over. I'd been playing this game for almost a decade, and never before have I ran into this. I was shocked. A feature I'd heard vaguely of in passing, but never experienced nor known anyone who had ever hit it. In Final Fantasy XIV, there actually exists a Duty Finder daily cap. Based on my own experience here, it seems to apply specifically to dungeon runs and sits somewhere around the 100 region. I tried having another player cue me into duty, I tried server hopping, and I even tried data center traveling all the way over to light, all to no avail. My guess is that it's intended as a bot prevention system, which is totally valid, and when you hit the hidden internal cap for the day, you are given a complete duty finder ban until the next daily reset. But in this case, me, with my own two ninja daggers, a can of monster energy and a dream, I'd managed to hit the daily cap on my own and send the Square Enix fun police swooping down on me. And now, I was left with an incomplete relic and a duty find a ban until well past the 24 hour limit of this challenge. And as we agreed before, if it hits 24 hours, I delete the weapon. I was ready to give up and head to bed, tired, defeated and frustrated and with the inability to queue into any content, it felt like victory was going to be impossible. But then, I had a realization. There was one piece of content I could do that would give me light and didn't need me to queue into a duty to do it. And I could go and do it right now. Well then, lads. Well then, lads. Anyone want to do some fates? We, we could either do some fates or I could go to bed. Wake up tomorrow and start the stream for one hour to finish it off. Fates. It always comes down to bloody fates. At least the fates are quick, eh? We got that going for us. If this was rough though. There is a reason that people opt to do dungeons for these light farms. And that's because in order to achieve what one dungeon run does for you in progression, you need to complete roughly 10 fates with a gold ranking. I was five runs of Orum Vale away from completion. So I was looking at somewhere in the region of 50 fates to complete, on my own, at 2am at night. What was originally somewhere in the region of a 20 minute grind, had suddenly become an hour plus fiasco. Luckily, the real heroes of the day came to the rescue once more. Members of my chat zoomed over to Cerberus, and we started hammering away at it. taken longer than expected thanks to the incident, but in just over 14 hours I'd done it. The final hurdle had been overcome. 
I took my last tour of North Shroud over to Geralt's special corner, and with a little fanfare turned in this final step and picked up my very first Zodiac Zeta weapon. Now that I've done one, I feel like I can actually recommend people give this one a go if they haven't before. The grind isn't anywhere near as bad as it's made out to be, and I can honestly see it being an amazing filler thing to work on while your friends are busy or you have an hour here or there spare. Just don't do it in a day like me, or you're going to invoke the wrath of Yoshi P's special forces. Now I can proudly stash these away in my retainer and never look at them again as long as I live. Thank you so much for watching friends if you like this video. Check out the one where I went for Lone Hero and almost had an aneurysm in the process. Have a great day!